Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the uses of uh, airborne hyperspectral images to support the Alpine forest management. So the outline of this uh, presentation are so an introduction on, of hyperspectral area survey at AVT and um, how the workflow for the, these projects works and uh, the application in forestry. And we will see also some uh, final results of uh, one project that we have conducted last year uh, in Bruneck, that is near here in Bozen, and um, some conclusion and uh, how to look about it. So uh, a brief introduction about the company, AVT, uh, it has, was founded in 1970, and the main activities are area survey, and for most of the time, the, the principal products were photogrammetric uh, uh, products. And now in the last years, uh, we are um, providing new services by using new sensor as hyperspectral or thermal uh, sensor. And uh, we both uh, carry out the surveys uh, on aircraft or by using uh, UAV. Um, we currently have four airplanes and they are based in Germany. And the, the choice to, uh, about the base in Germany is to be able to fly in all the Europe. And um, so we can uh, survey uh, almost everywhere. And uh, now we are going also to see how does the workflow works. So a brief introduction about the, um, the hyperspectral sensor that we have in our company is the ISA Phoenix 384 uh, by Speckim. Speckim is the manufacturer from Finland. This sensor is a push broom sensor and it acquires 364 bands in the V-near and the short wave uh, infrared um, spectral region. So from 400 to 2,500 nanometers. Uh, the spectral resolution uh, change uh, between the two spectral domain uh, in the veneer is about 3.9, 3.5 nanometers, and in the short wave infrared is 12, uh, because we have two different detectors inside the, the sensor for the two um, spectral region. And uh, the 384 is the number of pixels um, that the sensor has. Uh, they are, we have a, a line of pixel, and that's why it's also a push pump sensor. And uh, the field of view is 32 uh, degrees. And uh, the advantage of this sensor is that it acquires both veneer and short wave infrared uh, simultaneously. And uh, they are stuck in, a, in one data cube, while in other sensor it's not possible you have two different sensor for one spectral region and they acquire with different also GSD and they are not easy to handle. And to fly, um, to have one, uh, one meter of GSD in the hyperspectral image, you have to fly 677 meters above uh, the ground level. And uh, also uh, you can see uh, on, the, on the right, uh, the sensor installed uh, inside the aircraft. And as you can see, the red box is the GPS IMU, uh, in this case from IGI, it's a company from Germany. And uh, it also is, uh, the sensor is installed on a geostabilized mount that um, helps to uh, reduce the pitch, uh, row and yo um, angles and stabilize the, the camera to point perfectly in either respect to the survey. Uh, currently, we also have a new project named MAPIS, uh, founded by the um, Trento province, the province of Trentino, sorry. And uh, so now we have uh, also an hyperspectral camera from drone. It's the iFix 10, uh, again by Speckim. And it acquires uh, 224 uh, uh, bands in the Vineer region. It has 1,024 pixels and the uh, spectral resolution is 5.5 nanometers. And inside uh, this, the, the camera, there is a GPS IMU. And uh, currently we are using uh, this camera with a DJI M600 
and uh, we also have installed a gimbal um, to compensate the oscillation during the flight uh, to, to have a, a nice image uh, without uh, problems at the end of the geo-rectification. Uh, briefly, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages uh, respect to multispectral sensor? Well, uh, well, probably we already know uh, about it, but just um, multispectral has few bands. Uh, if we are talking about photogrammetry uh, sensor, they have four bands, uh, RGB and near, while in the hyperspectral, in this case, we have uh, 364 bands uh, that covers a wider range, uh, a spectral range. Um, so we have an advantage, of course, in the spectral resolution. Uh, and then about the spectral resolution, uh, is of course, it's lower. Um, so when we can achieve oh, between 2 and 30 centimeters of GSD with a multispectral camera, uh, from the hyperspectral, uh, usually we fly to achieve 1 meter if the terrain uh, uh, allows us to, to fly low. Uh, or we can go up to two or three meters. So this is the, um, the main disadvantage is the resolution, of course, but um, the main point of this hyperspectral sensor is that they are built to provide good uh, spectral uh, data. So uh, about forest application, um, we, we collect the hyperspectral data and uh, they are useful for visual inspection by combining the different bands. Um, the, then we can perform classification of uh, the three species, um, vegetation indices, and we will see some example, and also perform some analysis, analysis of the vegetation at status. Um, other application are uh, in identify alien species, uh, a bark beetle uh, uh, attack. And then uh, you can also, there are uh, already uh, different papers about the combination of LIDAR data with hyperspectral, where they improve the final accuracy of the analysis and, uh, and the statistical analysis. So for who is not familiar with this sector uh, in, uh, in aerial uh, project workflow, uh, first of all, uh, before the flight, um, we define the area of interest uh, with a customer, and then we perform a flight planning uh, that needs to be checked uh, with the terrain model and the uh, requirements of the GST. And then you have to send some air control uh, permission, and uh, we perform the sensor calibration uh, each year at the SPECIM for the radiometric and geometric calibration. And we also perform a test flight uh, to evaluate uh, the both site angle calibration to compensate the picture and your errors. And during the flight acquisition, um, so there is a weather monitoring uh, every day about the area because we fly only with blue sky. And this is um, the crucial point of uh, the aerial survey, uh, because we are strictly um, bind to the weather status. And um, then uh, we start to fly and we acquire the data with respect to the flight planning. And, uh, we, and then we can go to the pre-processing where we perform the trajectory uh, post-processing. And uh, we have the raw data. So you have to move from the raw data to, to radiance, and to do that, we use the uh, calibration um, uh, report provided by SPECIM. And so we move from digital number to, to radiance, and then uh, we perform the geometric correction. And to do so, we use the uh, DSM of the area of interest to auto rectify the hyperspectral image. And finally, uh, we perform the atmospheric correction to, to move from a radiance at the sensor to the reflectance on the surface. Uh, when you have done all this um, correction, uh, you are ready to, to go to, to do some analysis, uh, like a classification and most of the case, uh, or um, um, find a spectra embedded in the image. 
uh, usually we use, of course, uh, machine learning to train a model uh, respect to some ground truths and classify then the, the area. And so the thematic uh, products uh, are generally maps, uh, georeferenced uh, with uh, several uh, thematic uh, classes. Uh, we will see some example. Here is an example from uh, some data set of Trento uh, that we were acquired uh, several years ago. Uh, this is uh, an example of classification in a forest area. In, in this case, there were many field uh, um, points uh, about different species. Uh, uh, yeah, three species. And also, uh, as uh, inside the usage project, uh, there is also the Ferrara project where we flew over Ferrara and with hyperspectral and we achieved one meter of resolution. And we also try to perform a classification about the three species uh, in the urban area. Uh, in this case, uh, we have highlighted 24 uh, uh, species. Visitation indices. So uh, basically, uh, with the use of an hyperspectral uh, sensor, uh, you have um, hundreds and hundreds of bands uh, with really narrow. And so you can, of course, you can calculate broadband indices like NDVI, for example but also uh, narrow band indices. Um, by narrow band, uh, I mean uh, uh, indices that use a specific wavelength of the spectrum. Uh, for example, uh, uh, PSRI or RE and DVI, red edge and DVI. And there is also the modifier red edge. And so uh, basically there are hundreds of visitation indexes uh, about uh, chlorophyll content, uh, water content, uh, or um, photochemical activity, and uh, so on. About the project of Brunek, uh, the area size was quite big, 340 uh, square kilometers. Uh, the flying period that requested was at the end of September, because the um, forestry managers want to uh, check the final status of the bark beetle attack and um, so as i said we can fly only with optimal uh, blue sky uh, we were not lucky to fly at the end of september of the last year due to the weather condition uh, however um, we flew at the beginning of october so the sun angle wasn't the best but we flew during the midday uh, in two days and we acquired 44 images. Here is an overview of the area. As you can see, it's quite complex, the terrain. So we had to fly uh, 11,000 feet above the ground level to avoid to crash the aircraft uh, against the, the mountain. <laughs> and uh, we flew uh, north-south in the second image. Where you can see the flight planning. Uh, we flew... We fly north-south to um, reduce the, what is called also BRDF effect. And on the, on the right, uh, we can see the final mosaic in RGB from the hyperspectral. And uh, there is just a tiny small area in the southeast uh, that is missing because it was not possible to acquire those images. So here we have some uh, final uh, um, vegetation index that we have calculated and that uh, result uh, really useful for the forest inspectorate of Brunek. Uh, for example, the modifier red edge normalized difference vegetation index, the photochemical reflectance index on the plant senescence reflectance. So the first one is uh, use a specific wavelength in the red edge uh, to assess the greenness of the, the canopy, and it doesn't get saturation uh, like the NDVI. Um, the PRI is more uh, connected to the photochemical um, activity of the, the vegetation, and the plant senescence reflectance index is connected to the uh, yes to the senescence of the of, of the of the canopy. And as you can see, they are already cropped um, 
or I mean, we can see only the, the pixels that uh, represent the forest because uh, before uh, the hyperspectral, there was also a LiDAR uh, flight. So we were able to produce a DSM and a DTM, normalize uh, the DSM and to extract a good uh, uh, raster mask for the forest. And then we perform all the analysis on the forest mask. So here, uh, then we, we assess the uh, three species classification. Uh, it's not uh, a great detail because the customer uh, highlighted the most uh, species present in this area are the, well, of course, the Norway spruce and uh, large um, uh, Scott pine and uh, deciduous, uh, deciduous species uh, were not uh, significantly important for them. So we just collect them as deciduous. And also I have included in the classification a shadow class as uh, we flew in the, the first uh, week of October. So there were uh, several shadows uh, inside the area. And uh, as that trees uh, here, I, I just uh, combine uh, the damage from bark beetle. So all the trees that you already see that were attacked and they are going to die or they are already dead. Um, so we can see also the number of polygons that so ground truths that the forestry managers provide us. And we have light um, uh, hundreds of pixels as training. And then we split the, um, the, class, uh, the training in 70-30. 30% uh, will be used for the validation. And we can see the 30% in the confusion matrix um, that uh, gave us an accuracy of 87%. For uh, the classification as input, we tested different um, inputs, uh, for example, uh, by using all the bands or uh, by doing a transformation of the bands. And uh, we used the minimum noise fraction that was highlighted by several uh, research papers to give uh, the best result. And indeed, it, it, it does. So we provide uh, the forest stream, this forest map to the, to the customer. And here uh, we can see some uh, zoom on the on the different area. So the, the area of Brunek is uh, strongly attacked by bark beetle due to also the the via uh, event of 2018, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so we can see the orthophoto at 20 centimeter on the top uh, left, and then we can see the classification map. Um, the, and the different uh, vegetation index that I showed before. So we were able to, uh, uh, to, to produce uh, uh, maps at uh, crown level uh, resolution. Another example, uh, more in detail, uh, again, the same um, products that I showed before. And the overlay also the georeferencing is pretty good with respect to the orthophoto of 20 centimeter. Now uh, the forestry managers ask us to, to fly again this year, and we on also a larger area of 650 square kilometers, and we were able to perform the, the flight at the end of September, the 25th and 26th. And the total number of females is 47. It didn't increase a lot because we the area just increased in the north-south direction. So the images are just more longer. And so they, they are pretty heavy. Like one image could be 15 gigabytes or something like that. So here we can see some preliminary results. Uh, on the left, uh, the RGB um, visualization of the hyperspectral. And, and these products are already um, corrected uh, ab uh, about radiometry and geometry and uh, also reflectance. And on the right, we can see a full color of the, of the area. And some, I just collect some pixels and uh, about that status and damage it. And here we can see all the spectral signature. I have to hurry up and uh, sorry for the time. Uh, so here we have uh, some uh, results of a test that we did with the iFix 10 on the UAB. On the left, RGB, on the right, the false color. 
On the north side, we can see uh, um, some Norway spruce attacked by barb beetle. Uh, different stage, there are some dead trees and some that are currently under attack on, on false color. And here are some preliminary results. Uh, we just plot some spectral signature of different um, um, classes. Uh, however, you can see that the reflectance is quite high because in this case we use an empirical correction by using a white reference panel on the ground and probably is not so correct for this slope area and uh, we have to investigate that. And however, uh, between the different classes, uh, we have light um, different bands uh, that are strongly significant to distinguish them and most of them are in the near region. So in conclusion, uh, we provide all these uh, products about the bark beetle damage and the narrow band uh, visitation index result to be useful to the customer and the um, future investigation will be the comparison with the UAV and Airborne and Sentinel um, the completion of uh, 2023 flight that we we did just a few weeks ago and so we thanks the forest inspectorate of Bruneck and the autonomous province of Trento for the MAPIS project and thank you for your attention.